Good morning and welcome to Q&A Friday with uh, Rumpi Funzawabaya from Tulia Group Community Interest Company. Just a brief introduction to Tulia and what we do. Tulia is a community interest company. It is an organization that provides legal advice, immigration advice. Also, we provide support for migrants. So support in terms of emergency accommodation, support in terms of supported living for um, young asylum seeker children, um, support in terms of therapeutic support from um, therapists who we work with and partner with. So we provide a wide range of services and we're based here in Coventry. However, our services are nationwide as we are able to give remote um, advice and services, primarily advice and representation. It is uh, remote access, but mostly if you, people need practical support, um, it is local in our local area. Please visit our website, www.tulia.org.uk, which will um, give details of the work that we're doing and how you can contact us. You can contact us by email, um, and you can also book a free minute, free 15 minute consultation on our Calendly link, which is in at the bottom of the screen. What we do at Tulia is we give um, immigration advice that is paid for, and also we also give free advice. Our paid for services subsidize our free services. So where we charge for the work that we're doing, part of that goes towards some of the work that we do for people who are destitute, people who are victims of domestic violence, people who are facing um, crisis and our immigrants in the United Kingdom. So that is what um, we do at Tulia. And every Friday we have a Q&A Friday where you ask, our que you ask questions and we answer them. So we take most of the commonly asked questions and we bring an answer to you. So the question that we have been asked the most the most this week is is the um sponsorship visa for carers is it coming to an end is it coming to an end in february 2022 2023 2023 is it coming to an end and i ask people when they ask me this where have you got this information because Information goes round on TikTok, it goes on WhatsApp in groups and people will be discussing. I was really happy to see on some of the groups that people were openly um, sharing the links of where the announcement was made that um, there was an inclusion in the shortage occupation list of um, care workers and home carers versus senior carers and other occupations. Um, and this would be reviewed after a year. So I, I think whoever started the messages took from that that it's going to end after a year. However, it's what I want to do is to read um, a, a letter which is on the Home Office website, which was um, written to Professor Brian Bell, um, who is um, the chair of the Migration Advisory Committee. And this letter was written in December 2021 by um, Kevin Foster, who is the Minister for Safe and Legal Migration. And in this letter, he wrote this to the Mi Migration Advisory Committee to say that they wanted to thank them for bringing forward the recommendation to add care workers and home carers to the health and care visa and the shortage occupation list. So this was in recognition um, of the crisis that was in healthcare in terms of home carers and care workers. So the government accepted the recommendation and the minimum uh, salary, which was 20,480 per year and expanded the health and care visa to add onto that care workers um, and home carers. 
and the this was a, a, a very big step because it was um the first time that this was the only occupation outside um a certain level of qualification which is called the rqf level three so this is the only uh, occupation outside the rqf level three which was eligible to use the points based system so that was what was different about that that you didn't have to have certain qualifications to do it and it was below as it's, it's home carers and care workers are not your traditional skilled workers so this opened up this exception um because the government recognized in the letter the government made this decision in recognition of the exceptional situation faced by the care sector during the pandemic and the strong evidence that they provided to support this recommendation so it wasn't a decision that was taken lightly it was a decision that was uh, made based on the crisis that was in the sector um and the letter goes on to say the home office will therefore need to keep this measure under close review and may also need to consider the position further when the full report is published in april 2022 and as a result of this the government the letter goes on to say we are creating an initial 12 month time window whereby workers can apply for visas in this occupation this will be reviewed internally at a later stage in 2022 to determine the success of this change in relation to the wider changes to the sector to attract and retain staff and the position with regard to the impact of COVID-19. And the Home Office will work with the Department for Health and Social Care to determine the best way to assess the impact of this change and whether it remains appropriate for care workers to be on the shortage list. So the measure came in force in, 20, in February 2022. And since then, there have been um, many people who have migrated under this route. Uh, as home carers and care workers, which has been fantastic. It has not been without its problems. Some of these problems have been widely, widely reported in the newspapers, and there have been different challenges on the part of the employers, on the part of the care workers. And I think this comes as well with taking people who, who um, because it, 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 it's a new route, and it's the first one where home carers and care workers with minimum um, qualifications or no qualifications um, were able to just migrate on mass so it opened up the door for so many other people to to migrate and it is being reviewed there's been no i have looked everywhere and there's been no announcements to say that it will it will be stopped it is going to be reviewed yes but the outcome of that review has not yet been made public um the factors that they will look at is the experience of the employers they will also look at the wider sector and the need has that shortage been filled is there still a need how is winter coming up there's you know they're, they're, during winter how are they going to cope with um with the crisis in healthcare um which is being um predicted and i've um i don't have the article right to hand but i do know the nhs is needing to recruit care workers because they're short they're continuing to recruit nurses there is a massive shortage in uh, the united kingdom um i i don't have statistics to give you but i don't see that they will be able to say we have sold this solved this um crisis regarding care workers and we're now going to stop recruitment from abroad I do not see um, that happening, uh, but that is just my opinion. So it may it may change, but um, we don't know that. But one thing that is important to note is that if the um, the home carers and care workers are removed from the shortage occupation list and are removed from um, the health and care worker visa, senior carers are still on the health and care visa, youth workers, social workers, teachers, um, counsellors, all the other professions that were there are still going to be there. They're not going to be removed. And so it's not that sponsorship is being closed. 
I think those are some of the things that people are are saying and worried about that sponsorship is being closed. Nobody's going to be able to come here. Chateau Pera, Chateau Vara. Um, but no, no, that's not correct. Um, that's not the correct situation. There's no need to panic. It only refers to um, SO, um, the, the SOC code 6145, which is care workers and home carers, care assistants, home care assistants, and support workers in nursing homes. Um, these, these are the, this is the group that will be reviewed uh, as to whether it can stay on the health and care visa and on the shortage occupation. Reviewed, not removed. Reviewed means looking at the wider statistics in the whole country. Reviewed um, looks at whether it's been, has it has it plugged a shortage. What else can be done? Should it be changed? Should the minimum salary go up? What should happen? So review means a lot of things. Review means looking at st statistics, not looking at just the experience of people from one country. So I've read um, some places where they're saying it's all because of you, you people, you Zimbabweans, you've messed it up for everybody. And it's you because you came here and you caused problems. So I've seen people shouting at each other, people who are in Africa saying it's all of you who went you, you know, to the UK and you've caused problems for us. It's um, it's people saying employers are too greedy. It's a lot of things are being said, um, which is not what I, I, the Migration Advisory Committee, they will look at that. I think they will look at experiences of, of, of people as a general trend, but what they will look at is what is the need for this, for this service what is how is the crisis in health and social care how 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 are, are the gaps being filled do we still need labor do you still need people to work if the answer is yes there are people who need help we need work people to work shall we continue so they look at statistics they look at the need they look at the demand um and bring that and make that case to the government to say we need to continue so the government reviews it at a very high level. So I would say, please stop panicking and sending scaremongering um, messages, causing people to pay so much money out of desperation. And so that's how uh, some people work. They instill fear to instill panic to cause you to pay. Because when you're panicking, thinking, I've only got until February, and someone says, yes, it's been closed, I'm going to... If you give me 20 grand or whatever, or 10 or whatever, 15, I'll do it for you right now. Uh, people will find that money. So it's very important to, to know the truth and to know what is really happening. And um, knowing that um, is a route being closed or is a route being reviewed? Um, is there anything that I can do to advance my, my chances? Is there any courses and programs that I can do? Instead of being vulnerable to people who want to um, exploit, maybe you can invest that money in getting a, a degree in social work, then you know definitely you're going to be able to come easier. Or you could get a degree in nursing and use your money that way so that you, you can then be able to, 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 um, to actually migrate uh, as a qualified nurse in a couple of years or as a, as a qualified social worker in a couple of years. I see people with uh, first degrees who, who are desperate to come and they don't want to do a, a, an additional year or two doing a master's in social work. But if you were able to do a master's in social work, get some work experience, your options then are so much wider and you have so many other choices and so many other employers who can employ you. So it's important to continue to think, to read, to make sure that the information that you're getting is correct rather than um, falling prey to scammers and to people who are ready and willing to exploit. And I always think that people uh, like, not that they like to be exploited, but they like to hear things which are easy, to hear things where someone says, if you give me this much money, I will do this. Um, but usually that comes with a lot of um, challenges where, it, where you see that the amounts are very high and things like that. You know that mm, maybe this is not genuine, but you just go with it. So sometimes you allow yourself, you know, to be put in that position where you're scammed um, because it's easier.
to think that this can get me out of my situation. But uh, I, this is a warning and an answer to, to a lot of questions. Please don't fall prey and um, be, yeah, just be, be, be wise and uh, read and follow credible sources and look for credible sources where you get credible, real information rather than being taken advantage of. So that is, that has been our hot question for the week. Next week, we will have a different question and we will come back and answer that. So if you've got a question for us, uh, please send it to um, info at tulia.org.uk or DM us on our Instagram or Facebook and we will answer on a Friday. We also just take, we go with what is what the what, what the, the, the concerns are, what the issues are, and then we answer those as well. So it may be that we won't answer your question next Friday, but we'll keep it and we will continue to answer all your questions. If you do need advice, please contact us on um, info at tulia.org.uk, which is on the screen now. Um, thank you and have a fantastic weekend. Any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Be blessed and take care.